Hmm. Trip Strip Trigger. Hmm. Pit Trap Location. Ah. Oh, hey, camera that I pretended not to see, but I obviously saw because I set up. It's me, Checkers, and uh, I was just reading Man Trapping by Regnar Benson. It, it's a great piece of literature. But anyways, uh, as you may have not noticed, you have not had a video this week or the week before. And I do not have an excuse for the reason that you did not have a video the week before, but I do have an excuse for why you haven't got a video this week, and this is the reason why. Resident Freakin' Evil 6. Now, as you probably don't know, Resident Evil 4 is my favorite game of all time. Surprisingly, I like the Wii version the most. I also have it on the PlayStation 2. And the eye touch. But anyway, Resident Evil 4 was my favorite game of all time, so obviously I got Resident Evil 6. And from what I've heard, this video has been getting mixed reviews for the most part. I thought it was pretty freaking good. And, um, I guess I'm just gonna go talk about the game in this video. I'm not sure if you can really call it a review if you want to, but I guess you could. Pretty much, uh, in this game, there is there are three different characters to my knowledge. I'm pretty sure there's a fourth one. The reason for that is, if you look at the achievements, it says beat blah blah blah's campaign, beat blah blah blah's campaign, beat blah blah blah's campaign, secret achievements, and then the actual achievements. So I'm guessing the secret achievements are another character that's added on. But so far, from what I know, there is Leon's campaign, and Leon is a freaking badass, best video game character by far. He's like, just a badass and he has pretty awesome hair, no homo. And there's Chris, um, I know him from Resident Evil 5. I know he's in the original Resident Evil, but I didn't really like him that much. I played through about, I'm gonna say, two-thirds of Resident Evil 2 and I just quit. I don't really like Resident Evil 2 that much, to be honest, but... It's an alright game, but it's kind of eh for me. I really, I don't know, it's more focuses on puzzles and it's less of a shooter, pretty much, which I do not like. I, I don't like puzzles that much, to be honest. That's the one... With uh, Legend of Zelda, some of the puzzles in a way, they, as you might see in Epic Tale 2, I was poking fun at that, how some of the puzzles you just can't figure out. In the recent Resident Evil games, I like the puzzles a lot. You may say, oh, they're too easy, but for me, I can actually figure them out and I don't get too pissed off. I don't have to Google a walkthrough every couple seconds, so that's what I like about it. But I'm rambling off, but yeah, Chris is the second campaign. He's from Resident Evil 1 and 5. Leon's from Resident Evil 2, 2 and 4, and then there's Jake. I am not sure completely if he's in any other Resident Evil Resident Evil games. I know you can yell at me for not playing them. The Resident Evil games I've played is most of 2, then I beat 4, beat 5, and right now I'm obviously working on 6. So the campaigns they have are Leon, Chris, Jake, and someone else who I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's on there, not completely sure, but anyway, more of the stories there is between three and four campaigns. And each of these campaigns has five chapters. And then each chapter can take anywhere from um, an hour and a half to three hours to complete. So let's just go do the, so let's just go do all the math here. So let's just assume that you beat each chapter in two hours and then it makes up more or less. So let's go see. So two times three is six. Six times five is thirty. This game has 30 hours of gameplay on it. Right now, I have only beat Leon's campaign. I believe it took me about 11 hours for five chapters, so that's about... I don't know, like a little over two hours per chapter. But the moral of the story is this game is freaking long. So yeah, I think Resident Evil 4, I think this game was about 15 to 20 hours. Don't remember that too well, I beat it a couple years ago. Resident Evil 5, I believe, was between 11 and 15 hours. It took me 11 hours for just one of the three character storylines in this. So I'm pretty much just going to be reviewing just Leon's chapter, because I beat Leon's chapter first, because first of all, it's the first in order, and second of all, it's freaking awesome, and you can see my tripod in the reflection. So I'm going to be talking about Leon's campaign. Now, pretty much what I think they did, in the game, they did for this game is they took what you loved about Resident Evil 4, and took what you loved about Resident Evil 5 and tried to mix it together, and for the most part, it worked. So what they took from Resident Evil 5 is the whole buddy system idea, and how um, 
both have to both people have to do different puzzles and you like sort of get split up at times but you reconnect and you have to help each other out in a way. They did that in this in Resident um in Resident Evil 6 campaign on Leon's campaign. You have um Helena who's helping you which is this one new CIA girl but she's helping you so it's similar to Resident Evil 5's buddy system. And then they sort of took the inventory system from uh Resident Evil 5 with the whole um you don't have the case, I actually like that about Resident Evil 4, but I can see how you can't fit that into a two-person game. So you just have a certain amount of slots. Something I do not like about this game is you, in between levels, you don't really have an inventory system on this. Instead of upgrading guns, you um, take certain character skills, like you'll make it so that you can go inflict more damage with melee, inflict more damage with certain guns, carry more ammo for certain guns. So you can't really manage your inventory. And also, you can't really sell any of your inventory, so you're going to have to go figure out what you don't like, and you're, like, and you're actually going to have to discard it. And in survival horror games especially, I'm as conservative with stuff as Mitt Romney, so I obviously don't like wasting stuff. So it kills me when I have to, like, discard handgun ammo, but, you know, I just don't have space with it, and I'd rather have a couple incendiary grenades rather than handgun ammo. So that's something I don't like, how they make you dispose of certain types of ammo. And uh, also how you can't save up your guns and everything, you have to... I've never discarded a gun, actually, but they take up space, too, and that just... Something I don't really like in how uh, ammo takes up space and everything. So I don't like how certain things, like um, how your explosives take up space. So I don't like how you have to discard things and be wasteful, for one part. But during the start of the game, what you're going to notice, with this campaign at least, is they don't give you enough... They don't give you enough ammo or medicine in this, so pretty much what I did, since I didn't have enough ammo, is in this game, instead of using a knife, you can just go around ninja kicking everything. You have stanima, but that builds up. So what I did is I took a survival horror game and turned it into a fighting game. I went Mortal Kombat on zombie asses, okay? I went around and I just ninja kicked everything. I roundhouse kicked, I curb stomped. I was just beating the crap out of zombies in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now as the game goes further, they give you more ammo, but at the start, they don't. So I ran around and I was kicking everything. If I lost too much health and I had to go use an herb, I would restart from a checkpoint because I couldn't afford to use up my medicine in this game. So yeah, I was just freaking ninja kicking everything at this game, but as you get more ammo, I went on. So if you're playing this game, conserve ammo, be like me, ninja kick everything. <laughs> But as the game goes on, they give you more guns, they give you more ammo. I remember by the last level, I was actually discarding handgun ammo, and earlier I was discarding remote bombs just because they weren't much use to me. And also another thing that's weird about this game is in Resident Evil 4 with the boss battles, you had to go hit them in certain parts, certain body parts and everything for every single boss battle, you had to figure out a strategy. In this game, I'm not even joking, for some bosses, the whole entire goal is to just shoot the heck out of them until they die. So yeah, I would just like unload a shotgun, unload my machine gun, use up a couple incendiary grenades, and then it just dies. So that's something that was weird to me. In Resident Evil 4, you have to use a certain strategy. In this, in certain parts, you have to just shoot the crap out of it. And then sometimes you may need to do something like you may need to shoot the crap out of it, go up to it, and press X rapidly until you punch the crap out of it, and then it dies. But in this game, on some certain levels, there isn't much strategy to the boss battles, just shoot the crap out of them. So yeah, that was something that was sort of weird to me. I can live with it. But yeah, in this game, your the goal is you have to be really conservative with herbs and stuff. In Resident Evil 4, you could, you could afford to lose a little bit of ammo, afford to get hit every now and then. At the start of this game, in my opinion, it actually got easier as it went on. I remembered I was sort of disappointed. And then, so I played the first two, ch I played like, I think it was the first chapter. Then I went to a Rise Against concert, great band, by the way. And I was sort of disappointed. I was sort of like, I spent 60 bucks on this game, I was getting ready for it, and Ugh. Then I came home, and I stayed awake for six hours straight, and I had school the next day. I'm a great decision maker. But I stayed awake for six hours straight, playing this game, and it just gets funner as you go on. And it gets easier in a way, because they don't, like, deprive you of things. But yeah, that's all I really have to say right now, I guess, for the most part. The three storylines, they, they come together at a certain point, and it, around like the fourth or fifth chapter, all the stories come together, and then you do your equal parts, and the stories kind of, kind of counteract with each other, but 
that's all I really have to say. I'm sorry if this video was sort of dull to you, but that was pretty much just a, a review of Leon's campaign in a way. In this game, pretty much as far as storyline goes, it's there's just a new strand of Umbrella Virus and Neo Umbrella Corporations are releasing it everywhere. And your goal, as usual, is to go save the freaking world. So yeah, this is Checkers, and uh, the story, it's pretty straightforward. Not nearly as interesting as the other ones, but it's alright. This game is fun for me so far. I'm looking forward to playing Chris's campaign next, then Jake. I don't know Jake as a character that well, but I'm guessing it's going to be pretty good. And uh, yeah, this game, I recommend it. Um, the gameplay, it's pretty much just Resident Evil 4 gameplay with a partner with the Resident Evil 5 um, system of uh, inventory, but yeah, just imagine Resident Evil 4 gameplay in Resident Evil 5 with three different campaigns. This game is really long, you will definitely get your money's worth for it if that's what you're looking into. I personally, uh, it's not too long for me, but with some games I'll just get bored after about longer than 10 hours. But in this game it's Resident Evil, my favorite game series of all time from 4 through 6. So yeah, this game is pretty fun so far for me. I recommend it. Uh, if you liked Resident Evil 4 or Resident Evil 5, I would definitely give it a try. But uh, this is Checkers, and I will see you guys later. Bye.